Welcome or welcome back to the Royal Australian Historical Society's Researching Soldiers in Your Local Area project. This video will be a deep dive into the resources you can find on the National Archives of Australia website. So if we have the National Archives website open, we will go to explore the collection and defence and war service records. Now there's a lot of information here that you can have a look at later. If you have your local soldier in mind already, we can jump straight into record search, uh, which is the search function for the National Archives catalogue. And because we're searching for a particular soldier, uh, we'll open up the name search tab and write him in. So we are continuing with the same soldier we have been exploring through our videos, Carl Adelt. Uh, so we'll pop in just his family name here and select World War I. Now there is an option to put a service number in, uh, in your search, which I recommend if the soldier you're searching has a more common name. But adult is very uncommon, um, as we know, and there's no problem leaving out the service number because we will be able to find Carl's record. So we'll search. And it's come up with Carl and his two brothers, Burton and Rudolf, uh, who both also fought in the First World War. Now, this little icon here uh, tells us that the file is a digitized item. If it's not digitized, this space will be blank. And all World War I records are digitized. If you're searching for World War II records, some are digitized and some are not. Uh, so you'll just have to be lucky. If your soldier doesn't have a digitized record, um, then you'll have to find some other ways to research them or choose a new soldier. But we will open up Carl's record here by clicking on the icon. It is actually 45 pages long and it includes a lot of information, not just his enlistment form, uh, which is the first image you see here, um, but in Carl's case, uh, certificates of death, correspondence with next of kin uh, about personal items being returned to them um, and some other information. So if we zoom in here, what you'll be able to find about your local soldier from these records. This is their attestation paper uh, and Carl enlisted we see uh, early, early in 1914, uh, it includes all his biographical details, uh, including where he was born in Melbourne and his age, 22, his occupation, commercial traveller, his next of kin and their address, the White Cottage of Wollstonecraft, and his signature declaring that the information is true and he is willing to enlist in the First World War. So we can take a quick scroll through these records. Each soldier's record will have different information. This gives us a description of Carl. He had a fair complexion, blue eyes and reddish brown hair and a small scar above his left eyebrow on the outer end. He was also vaccinated. So if we can keep scrolling through these records and we'll be able to find some information about Carl's death. So this is the first document that shows us this uh, report of the death of a soldier and it just gives us very vague details, died of wounds received in action on the Gallipoli Peninsula. So there are further details uh, later in the report. Here it tells us that he had a GSW, a gunshot wound to the chin, implicating his neck, uh, which was the cause of his death. And it tells us that he was buried by a chaplain of the HMS Prince of Wales at sea. And here are just some more records uh, about Carl's death. There are also records uh, in this file about the consignment of his personal possessions back to his next of kin. 
So we have some official forms, including the receipt of a victory medal uh, to his father, Lewis. And there's one for a memorial plaque as well. And then there are also uh, lists of Carl's personal possessions being returned back to his family. So contained in the first brown paper parcel, we can see he had medallion, tobacco, his diary, some letters and knives, as well as a prayer book, two hairbrushes, a leather case, and his bugle and cord. And if we remember, Carl was a trumpeter, uh, so a bugle is not as strange a thing for him to have as you might think. And later on in the record, there's also some additional information just scroll through here. Some correspondence uh, written by Carl's mother, Nellie, um, to the uh, officials about Carl's possessions. So she's writing and sometimes the writing can be hard to read, um, but do the best you can. And she writes that my son, uh, Trooper Adelt, was killed in action at the Dardanelles. And up to present, we have not secured any of his possessions, although we were told that the bugle was to be sent to us. His trumpet, bugle, watch, and camera all had his name inscribed and was given to him by his father and sister. If possible, I would like to have them. Shall consider it a favor if you will inquire into this matter and inform me. Signed by Nellie Adelt. Carl's mother. And just some additional administrative information in Carl's record about his war service, his death, and his possessions. And this is quite an extensive record. A lot of soldier records you'll find won't have this much information in them, uh, but Carl's is quite long. We can have a look now at the records of Carl's brothers, Burton and Rudolph, and they will have some quite different information considering that they returned to Australia and won't have any of the death certificates. So again, Burton's record begins with his attestation form. It shows us that he was 25 at the time of his enlistment, meaning that he was Carl's older brother. And we can just have a quick look through his record here. It's only 17 pages long, nowhere near the 45 of Carl's. And it just has information about his enlistment and his war service here. So again, handwriting can be quite difficult to decipher. Uh, but there are usually typed records further along after the handwritten ones. But if you do want to have a go at reading the handwriting, by all means, here we can see that Burton uh, disembarked at Alexandria. When he arrived at the war, he, down here he was admitted uh, with tuberculosis to the hospital um, in the 11th of 1916. And we just have some extra information about his admittance to hospital. He went to England and he was discharged at this date, April 1917. Here we have some interesting information. So this and a few of the later uh, documents in this file is correspondence about Burton's disability pension. Uh, he contracted tuberculosis during the war, was hospitalized and discharged uh, due to being medically unfit. And this correspondence is inquiring about receiving his war pension, which is problematic because he moved to America after the First World War ended uh, in 1920. And there's just some difficulty with them determining whether or not he can still receive his pension, even though he's not in Australia anymore. So just a lot of administrative back and forth, which is quite interesting. If you read through it all, and again, a very different kind of record to what we found in Carl's, and it just shows you the range that you can find uh, when researching your local soldiers. 
And now we will briefly look at Rudolph's record. You can note here that Rudolph on the National Archives site is actually identified as Randolph. This is incorrect. His name was Rudolph. But again, sometimes you will encounter inaccuracies with the war records, uh, which is understandable considering the vast amount of people that they were dealing with. So we'll briefly open up Rudolph's record. So Rudolph's record has 23 pages, again begins with his attestation paper, which is unfortunately very hard to read because it was written in pencil, unlike the pen of the others. We can see here that he was, however, 21 when he enlisted, meaning he was Carl's younger brother. And so Carl Adelt, uh, the brother who died in the war, was the middle child. So Rudolph's record just takes us through these enlistment papers and then his war service record. So this has his war service record, thankfully in handwriting that's quite easy to read. We can see here that he is wounded in action in April of 1917 and he was admitted to hospital. Uh, he also had conjunctivitis at this time, uh, possibly related to his wound, which seems to have been around the area of the eyes. It tells us this all, this all happened um, in Egypt as well. So we can keep scrolling through the record. And some further information, which tells us that Rudolf was wounded again in December of 1917 uh, with a gunshot wound to the thigh. So he was admitted into hospital again and spent some time in hospital. And something else interesting to note here, it's written that Rudolf contracted influenza in November of 1918. We can take a guess that this may have been Spanish flu. Can't be certain for sure. Um, but then later on, he recovers. He goes on leave to the UK. And then he returns to Australia uh, later in 1919. So again, Rudolf has uh, some different records compared to his brothers, Carl and Burton, and every soldier will have different documents. That's why it's always good to look up a few of your local soldiers instead of just one, because you never know uh, what you might find. Now we will have a quick look at uh, Rolf Adelt, who was Randolph's son who fought and died in the Second World War. So we'll go back to our search and we'll change World War I to World War II records to search Rolf. So this is showing us Rolf Adult's record and unfortunately there is no digitized item symbol up here, which means it is not available for you to read online. So this is about as much information as we can get about Rolf Adelt on the National Archives, his service number, his date in the process of being digitized by the National Archives. So some are available and some are not. To just take you quickly through what a World War II record does look like, we will quickly search another soldier who is buried uh, at the same cemetery as Rolf in Cairo. So this is Randall Barlow, and he does indeed have a digital copy of his record. So we'll open this up. It's only 13 pages, much smaller than any of the World War I records we were looking at. And Barlow's record, again, just has information about his war service, when he enlisted, where he fought, uh, his wounding, and his death in Libya. Now there, in this record, there his, is his certificate of death and just some extra information uh, about him and his death in the war. There is a file on his possessions returning to his kin, so notebook, photo, colour patch, identity disc and a fob chain. And then we have here uh, quite an unfortunately graphic description uh, of Barlow's death. You can encounter these when looking at war records. Uh, so it describes in quite a lot of detail 
uh, his gunshot wound uh, and eventual illness, which did lead to his death in January of 1941. And that is a World War II service record. Very similar in look to World War I records, but again with different information and it varies from soldier to soldier. So that is a deep dive into some of the records you can find about your local soldier on the National Archives of Australia, and we encourage you uh, to take a close look uh, through their records, World War I and World War II, to discover more about uh, what your soldier's war service was really like.